Welcome. Today we are going to focus on sensitive data discovery and how to provide a dynamic and powerful method to locate and analyze personal data. So you will notice there is a breakdown of the table review status and also the column review status on the project dashboard. This is where items will be marked as sensitive, suspect, review or safe. We also have a breakdown of the status so we can see that three tables have been scanned here in this case and I have a number of columns that are pending review. There is also a risk score for the project. So each sensitive piece of information that is found will have a score and the aggregate of those will create the risk score for the project. We also have a breakdown of risk areas. So these are tables which contain sensitive information. And then we also have the sensitive field count as well. So you will notice that I have five fields relating to PAA. I have six relating to contact and so on. So let's move over to the tables and run through the process of reviewing tables and columns. So you will notice that the time dimension table has already been reviewed and marked as safe. I have two suspect tables, which are order line and customer. So I would like to then review the customer table. Now I'd like to show all rows and scroll down. So we can see there are a number of columns that are marked as suspect. That means that SDM has found sensitive information in these columns. I also have two columns which are marked as review. That means that SDM has not found a sensitive type. So you will notice that for last name, the sensitive type associated by SDM is family name. I'm moving down to phone. We will see that this is associated with a telephone number, for example. So let's click into the last name column. Now we can see the sensitive type has been listed by SDM as family name in this case. Scrolling down, I can also see some of the other sensitive types that were searched. So we can see uh, city and country have also been analyzed here, but SDM has found that family name is the correct sensitive type for this column. So as the data owner, I have reviewed this column and I would like to confirm that SDM is correct, it does contain a family name. So I want to confirm that as the conclusion and click save. And then if I move back to the customer table, I will note that the status has now been updated to sensitive. That is because I have confirmed that it does contain a family name. So now I want to review the rest of the columns. So I'm going to select all, and review and confirm. That means the items that are flagged as sensitive will be marked as sensitive and the items marked as review they will actually be marked as safe as they don't contain sensitive information. As we can see customer ID has been marked as safe and the number of the other items have now been marked as sensitive. So moving up a level we will now notice that the customer table has actually been marked as sensitive as it contains at least one sensitive piece of information. Then we also have the order line table. So I'm going to review this next. And now you will notice that there are a number of items awaiting review and there are also uh, one item which has been marked as suspect. So this is the note column. So if I click into the note column here, this is marked as the sensitive type, which is credit card. However, as the data owner, I am aware that this actually should contain email addresses. So I can review this and override that sensitive data type. So if I click review, as the conclusion, I would like to select override personal data type and I would like to select email address and then click save. This will then update the sensitive type as email address as seen. And then if I go back to the order line table, 
I will note that the note column has been marked as sensitive. I can then review the rest of the columns and confirm that they don't contain sensitive information. The rest of the columns will then be marked as safe, as we can see, and I do have one sensitive piece of information for the note column here. So let's move up a level again. And now you will notice that the order line table has been marked as sensitive. Even though there's seven columns which are safe, if you have one sensitive column, the table will be marked as sensitive. So let's move over to the, the columns section. Again, we can see a breakdown of the column status. Note that the column status has been updated as I have been reviewing columns and tables. Again, we have the updated risk score. We also have a breakdown of the suspect and sensitive columns. So I have 10 sensitive columns and I also have three suspect. These are still awaiting to be reviewed. Then I also have, at a finer level, the exact details for those columns. So I have a number of email addresses. I have street addresses marked here. I also have first names and postal codes, for example. If I quickly move back to the dashboard as well, we will also see the updated totals for the tables as well. Again, we have that table review status has also been updated as I have been reviewing tables and columns as I go along. Now, moving over to the report section, you can also ensure that you are being compliant and, and prove that you're being compliant by running a report. So we can see project details. We can also see the components that are associated and also the registered tables here and the sensitive columns that they include. You could export a report to HTML or to PDF. This is useful if you'd like to prove that you are being compliant. You could also possibly secure this report to Content Manager as well. There is also some auditing capabilities as well. So if you wanted to track changes that have been made to the system, you could track what users have reviewed exactly what tables and columns by coming to the, the audit section here. We also have some monitoring capabilities as well. If you have a database admin and they would like to see exactly what scan jobs have been performed and at a finer level exactly what SQL has been run for each of those jobs, then you could come over to the, the monitor section here and get that type of detail here. So useful if you want to get the finer level of detail, possibly useful for a SQL administrator or for anyone interested in knowing exactly what SQL commands were run as part of those jobs. So let's move over to the, the Grammars dashboard. We have yet another dashboard to be presented. And this gives a breakdown of the Grammars in terms of the classes that they belong to. For example, PAA, contact information, and PCA and PHA, for example. We also have the sets, types, and rules, which we will come to in a moment. We also have the breakdown of the localities, which are related. For example, we can see a number of the localities are relating to worldwide information, but we also have grammars relating to other countries such as Germany, Brazil and Spain, for example. We can also get a breakdown of the structure of those grammars as well. So we can see we have 168 dictionaries here. So this could be addresses, for example, or a list of terms. And then we also have regex patterns, so this could be telephone numbers or credit card numbers or national ID numbers, for example. You can also create your own custom dictionaries or regex patterns as well, which are specific to your organization. Then moving over to the classes. So we can see this is a breakdown of the, the grammar classes, so we can have personal information, contact information and financial information and we can also see exactly what has been selected for each of those grammar classes so we can see i have credit card and bank account listed here for the financial information grammar class then moving over to the sets 
In this example, I have one grammar set. And this is the global grammar definition file. And we now have the ability to update the XML file directly from the UA. So this is very useful if you would like to enable or disable certain grammars. And you can also update uh, the regex patterns as well, if you wish here, directly from the UA, as we can see. So very useful now, instead of having to try and find that XML file, you can actually now update that directly from the UA, if you wish. Then moving over to the types. So these are the types of information that we are trying to find. For example, I have first name and family name. You could also find nationalities and uh, national IDs, for example. And within each of these types, you can have multiple rules. So if I click on first name, for example, you could have multiple rules selected for the first name. So you may want to find Belgium first names and also German first names and French first names. So you could have multiple rules associated with one type. So that covers uh, most of the features that we have for the structured data discovery. We also have some remediation uh, options here as well. If I move back to the dashboard. Once you have analyze your data, you can come to the, the project dashboard and there is some remediation options. So once you have reviewed your tables and your columns, you can then take some action on that data. So there is some options here for generating masking, comp compositions, SQL shuffles, and also shuffles as well. So that covers most of the new features that are identified in the sensitive data discovery for uh, 7.6.4 so we can provide a dynamic and powerful method to locate and analyze your personal data so just recapping on what we've seen we discovered the uh, project dashboard we also reviewed some tables and columns we also reviewed the, the reporting capabilities and the auditing capabilities as well as the monitoring capabilities for a, a database admin they may want to see exactly what level of detail is sent for those sql queries during those scan jobs. And then finally, we also covered that grammar dashboard as well. Thank you.